and welcome to the Ultimate Startup Proforma Model Tutorial. This tutorial is intended to give the end user a better understanding of how to input their information and use the file to their advantage. The Table of Contents tab goes through the information necessary to put into the file. Sheets 3, 4, and 5 are the input tabs for the end user to input their information. Sheet 6 is a summary of the information. Sheet 7 will contain graphs and a break-even chart, which really gives that visual representation of the pro forma results. A few housekeeping items for the file. User inputs are identified by the blue font. Calculations are then identified by the green font and results are in the black font. To jump in, the sales revenue tab is the first input tab that the end user would have to input their information. Throughout the file, data has already been inputted. The end user would either remove this data or input their information over it. To go over how the file works, units sold would represent the product that is being sold. This is the first area where number or value inputs would be required. We'll see that we have 400 for our first product, 280 for our second product, product B, and 250 for our third product, product C. Again, this is inputted data that I can change. Below, we'll see the revenue for those particular products. Here would be the revenue that we would input. So for product A, the revenue per unit is $400, product B, $200, product C, $100. Again, these values can be changed to update the data. As you saw, when the numbers are updated, when the inputted data is updated, our calculations in the green font update along with it. So if we revert back to the 400 units being sold at $400 per unit, we see that our calculations update accordingly. Below is the cost of goods sold calculation. Again, we have the cost per unit. That cost is then multiplied by the product units sold to give us the cost of goods per unit. Below is the gross margin, which is the calculation of the total revenue less the cost of goods sold. The end user, after inputting their information, can close each respective area to summarize the data and really just kind of clean up the visual. The operating expense tab, very similar to the sales revenue. Here we have input data. Both Department A and Department B have expenses, expenses A, B, and C. The end user would input the expenses for that department. It would then update on the total expense line. The third and final tab for input information would be the salary expense tab. Again, we have Department A and Department B. Here is where we would input the numeric value of the job. So we have job title A, position A, job title B through job title E. The end user would then input how many positions are staffed for that particular position. If there was three job title C, we would update that. Below, we have the salary calculation for that position. Job title C, salary is $60,000 per position. Because we're looking at this in quarters, we are taking the calculation of the 60,000 multiplied by the total number of positions, which is now three, divided by four, four quarters in the year. We will then we will revert this back to two. We see our calculation reverts back to $30,000 for that particular quarter. Again, we have Department A and Department B. 
Below we have a summary of the total number of employees as well as the total salary for the departments. We can then collapse this information to get a nice summary of the department expense. The pro forma summary tab takes the input information from the sales revenue, operating expense, and salary expense tabs and summarizes it in a pro forma model. We have our revenues across the top, our cost of goods sold, the gross margin calculation. We then include our expense factors to get a total cost and then a net profit. We can see that for the first year, our net profit was negative and it wasn't until quarter one of year two where we started seeing a positive return. This data is pulled from each one of the respective tabs. So as we update the information in the tabs, the pro forma updates accordingly. The final tab is the graphs and break even. Here we have the break even profit loss ratio. So we see that quarter one through quarter three of year two, we were negative. It wasn't until quarter four in year two where we started seeing a positive return. Below that, we have our revenue over cost. So we see that each quarter in year one, our revenue was less than our cost. But again, as we saw in the pro forma summary, year two of quarter one is where our revenues had finally exceeded our costs. That does, however, not equate to a profit margin, a positive profit margin. It took a few more months of profitable revenue over costs to start seeing a return. The gross margin chart is showing the gross margin percentages quarter year over year, quarter over quarter. We see that in quarter two of year two, our margin dropped. This could be due to revenues dropping or it could be gross cost of goods sold increase. Below that is the cost summary where we break out the salary expense, the cost of goods sold, and the operating expense. What this chart is intended to do is show the breakout of where your costs are and to show where the high cost outliers are. Hopefully this quick summary and tutorial will help the end user input the information. Thank you.